Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. We are here in Arizona. Don't worry about it. Tour is over very soon, and then we are back in the studio. I've had enough. Uh, it's been very fun uh, going out and doing stand-up comedy again. You begin to realize how much you love it uh, and how much it is also uh, destroying your life. So it is nice to be out. Uh, come mid-November, we're shutting it down till the spring, and then we'll do another month in the spring. Um, but this will not, this, this constant... You know, Airbnbs and rental cars and planes is like, this was great. Not doing this was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll, I'm going to get back to that shortly. I'm just going to have a pandemic no matter what in my head. I don't care if everybody gets vaccinated. I don't give a fuck. I'm going back home, locking the door, going back inside. I will, I'm not. So when I put out dates, if you want to come see me, cool. If not, don't. But then it's going to be three or four months of doing nothing. This, this fucking... What I was going to do last year is be on the road 40 weeks or something crazy like that. I will never do that again. Um, I am happy doing these month, month and a half intensive tours and then fucking being done with it. Uh, because, uh, you know, enough's enough. I can reach more people like this, to be honest, than I can, you know, comedy club by comedy club, you know. And they're all lovely environments, these comedy clubs. They're all great, you know. I have owners of clubs coming in and giving me, uh, you know, re-gifted ear pods as a gift. for selling it out. I appreciate it. Um, but I will, I will, uh, I'll pass on that. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. The shows are really, really fun. None of the problems that I have ever have to do with the shows, which are the most fun. It is every other minute and hour of the day getting to that stage that is taxing. Um, so, you know, we're, we're out when we're out, we're out, come see us. We have a lot of fun. And then when we're in, we're in. And that is, that is what I've learned about this pandemic is that it reprioritized a lot of things for me. I'm going to put a lot more into digital. We're putting a lot into digital already. That's the future. The future is not, I see all these comics and I love them and I respect them. You know, they're performing in fields and on rooftops and wherever they can. And I get it and I respect the hell out of that. That is not the future. That is over. And I don't know what to tell you. It's not, maybe you don't like that that's over. Many people don't like many things. Um, doesn't matter. The future is the future. Um, and we're here in Arizona which is the worst state in the union uh, by far. There is no comparison. There is nothing worse than Arizona. Uh, Arizona is, uh, it is an absolute, I mean, it has no redeeming qualities. It is a hot, arid desert landscape uh, with some of the trashiest, least intelligent human beings uh, to have ever, uh, you know, graced the fucking, you know, planet. Here, it is bad. There are some hot people. There's some probably big OnlyFans accounts. There's some aspiring porn stars. Mm -hmm. There's a few guys that's probably fun to get into a Ponzi scheme with in Scottsdale. There's a few people that own houseboats on Lake Havasu that is probably fun. It's a great place to be when you're 23 and you're trying to fuck or, or whatever. I don't know. But, I mean, get me out of here. Get me out of here. I've had fun. The shows are fun. The crowds are fun. Um, but the crowds always, they also feel like it's like, you know, in, 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 you got to, if you lose them for a minute, you know, God only knows what happens here. God only knows what. People are just screaming. Ah! People are yelling and screaming. Um, it is, it is, a, it is truly an embarrassment, the state of Arizona. There's just no other way to put it. You know, the owner of the club was like, I'm staying in this place, Peoria. The owner of the club's like, oh, you're staying in Peoria. What are you doing? And I'm like, buddy, the whole fucking state should be firebombed. What are you, out of your fucking mind? You think you have an estate in the Pacific Palisades? It's a fuck. You're on the surface of Mars here, and everybody's a retard. <laughs> so what does it fucking matter where I am? The whole place is shit. It's irredeemable. One of your best restaurants in Phoenix has fried bread. It's called the Fry Bread House, and they take refried beans and put it on fry bread. It's disgust. I've really had it with the West. <laughs> I really have. The country shot. I drove from Utah to fucking Arizona. I'm sick of the red clay canyons and here's the general store. I'm sick of that hokey horse shit. Frontier town crap. It's enough already. Grow the fuck up. I'm sick of it. 
Give it back to the Indians. <laughs> Give it back to them, the Native Americans. My apologies. But the country's shot. It's disgusting. The Grand Canyon. We passed that. Looks the same as it did when I was a kid. It's disgusting. Do something else. I'm, it's just enough already with these. And of course, I'm with this 24-year-old who's opening for me. Who's like, I love him. He's an idiot. So, I mean, he's like, oh, isn't it beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it nice? You stop. It's not nice and it's not beautiful. Civilization is beautiful. People working is beautiful. Not rock formations. Get out of the national parks, please. You know what's beautiful? Uh, families, progress. That's beautiful. Not a red clay rock formation that looks like somewhere aliens land and face fuck you. Oh, Zion National Park is so beautiful. Yeah, it's great. Can you get me to Arizona, please, so I could perform for these fry bread heads? So I get the fuck out of here. Jesus Christ. These fucking tan, leathery people spent their entire life just fucking marinating themselves in vodka. I mean, I appreciate Arizona. They're open. They're letting shows happen. I'm down with that, man. They're letting things happen. We're all taking a few risks. These motherfuckers do not care. They are out there, maskless, just fucking partying. What are you going to do? We got to live. We got to do things. Some people don't want to live. That's the other thing. I mean, we're all creating government policy based on the idea that everybody wants to be here. That isn't true. A lot of people's actions suggest otherwise. So let them. Uh, infections are now up in New York City. They tried, what did they try to do? They tried to shut down the uh, Hasidic Jews. Yes. Because the Hasidic Jews aren't having it in, in New Brooklyn, York. Yeah. They're not having it. And listen, they're doing what they want to do. So Meatball <laughs> and de Blasio, who are destroying the city and state, respectively, are now picking on the Jews. Because nothing else is going right. Because the economy can't reopen. Because they've destroyed the entire city. So now they're picking on the Hasidic Jews who they really don't bother anybody. They just, they walk around with big hats and some of those hats are furry and I like those hats and I don't know what they call them. I always wanted to wear one, you know, without, you know, culturally appropriating or being a victim of a hate crime. What is that hat called? It's called the Strimal or a Shabbat hat. Yeah. You don't know what you're talking about. There's another type of hat that's furry. It's like a big furry hat. This one, right? By the way, I watched that documentary about Hasidic Jews, One of Us, and it was supposed to be uh, groundbreaking, and it was just the same. They're like, during a divorce, uh, there's a, oh, the war of the fam. I'm like, it's the same shit. Right. Can we stop pretending that everything's so fucking different, please? The Hasidic Jews are the same as these people that want to get drunk on like Havasu. They just don't give a fuck. Right. They don't care. If they're going to go, they're going to go. Stop trying to keep everyone on earth for what? I mean, this country is going to hell... <laughs> And everybody wants to keep everyone here. No, There are no jobs, and everybody goes, we need more people to not do the jobs that don't exist. Right. God forbid anyone die. <laughs> God forbid the employment, the unemployment office line's a little uh, shorter. If you take away people's freedom and you make them live in a fucking uh, prison of, of, of apps and algorithms... They are going to rebel because that is not a life. That is not a life. They want to be free. Trump is running, as Ty Rivera, who's opening for me, very funny comic said, Trump is running with freedom. Biden is running with maybe more lockdowns, maybe more. It's probably going to be neck and neck. But I will say this. If you are running as a candidate of making decisions and being free, you're pro you might win in this country because we are deeply uncomfortable. People like me are deeply uncomfortable with just having a federal government uh, stop
stop us from working indefinitely for, for something where there may not be a vaccine. This may be the best we do. We may have to let herd immunity build up. There isn't another option. The economy cannot be decimated completely to protect a small amount of people. Doesn't mean that COVID isn't real or that it isn't serious or that there aren't lasting effects. All of that is true. And it is tragic. The tragedy in this country is, is, is uh, it's all tragic, by the way. You know, what about the people, remember pre-COVID, all the people that didn't get health care and dropped dead? Right. Was that not tragic? What about the soldiers who got back from Iraq who didn't have mental health care and they blow their brains out? A, a staggering amount of them every month. Was that not tragic? Is this the only fucking thing that's tragic, by the way? Is coronavirus? Is there anything else that fucking upsets you people? <laughs> How about the kids that go to bed hungry every night? Is that tragic? How about all the people whose jobs were shipped to Bangladesh and they were told to rot in towns and do opioids with their kids? Is that fucking tragic? Or is there no fucking tragedy that doesn't begin and end with a fucking cough? Ugh. Okay? Let's rein it in here. Act like a fucking adult. Everything's tragic. Life is suffering in hell. Not for me at the moment. I'm in a nice Airbnb, but it ain't great. I don't like the design scheme. It's fucking Arizona. It's the best we're going to do. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. This, this attitude now that uh, this is the only problem we've ever fit. Nobody ever died before this. God forbid. I'm not saying you shouldn't protect yourself. If you're immunocompromised or if you don't want the risk, you don't have to buy a ticket to one of my shows. I think you should buy it and not come. Nothing would make me happier. <laughs> Nothing would make me happier than to sell out these shows and have no one come and walk out onto the stage and say, my fans are responsible, and then go back to the Airbnb. So please, if you are responsible, buy tickets for Chicago and Denver and Kansas City and Oklahoma City and do not come. None of you come. Just sell out the venues. Let me walk in. Let me sit on the stage. I'll feel safe. You'll feel safe. And then I'll do an Instagram live from the Airbnb. It's a win-win. I come, I get the check. I never need to work. <laughs> I don't need to work. And I think people who do are very sick. I need to earn money. I get that. I don't need to work for it. Yelp is now Yelp. So this is where we're at. We have police brutality. We have a, a very bad situation with the Breonna Taylor, with the no-knock warrant, which is a, one of the stupidest things that I've ever read about, have known about. The idea that the government can enter your house without knocking in the middle of the night, to me, is fucking insane. We have that. We have uh, Derek Chauvin... Um, Stepping on a man's neck for eight, nine minutes almost, killing him. We have protests erupt all over the country. We have instances of police brutality on film and on camera. Police need to be retrained. They need to be demilitarized. They need to reestablish, um, you know, a, a trust with, with communities. There needs to be more community policing. There needs to be more stuff to fight poverty in those communities so that people aren't necessarily uh, given no other option but to, uh, you know, embrace a life of crime. We need to fight that battle on all fronts. Now, we're not doing any of that, but <laughs> Yelp, Yelp has stepped in and is now allowing fat Americans to, to identify which restaurants are racist because like everything else in America, uh, the solution involves food. And dining. There's nothing in America that doesn't involve food. Remember when the Proud Boys and Antifa were fighting? They were throwing milkshakes. They were throwing milkshakes at you. It was a dessert-themed revolution here. And now, to correct police brutality, to correct, we now have Yelp stepping up and going, hey, let's identify uh, which Del Taco has a Nazi working there or whatever. I mean, I don't know. Just some guy that hands you a taco and looks at you and goes, you know, the food's okay, but these people got to go. And you're like, God damn it. 
What is this Yelp? Can you fill us yeah, in on yeah. this? Because this is fascinating to me. Can't I say any restaurant is racist if I don't like it? It looks like like so. And yeah. I will do that. I have a list of restaurants right now that I think are, they are, I will say that they're racist. <laughs> Yeah, they'll add a racist behavior alert to a business page when it has evidence of racist actions from a business owner or employee. And, Can uh, they do that to podcasts? <laughs> you better not do it to podcasts. I'll tell you that much. To determine if an alert is warranted, Yelp said it will rely on and link to what it calls independent news reports of alleged racist actions associated with a business. So, yeah, I mean, if you got a couple of your friends together and you kind of got the same story, it looks like you could, you know. And we could just say that, for example, me and Dan were driving through uh, Utah. We stay at the Best Western in Bryce Canyon. Mm. Fine. You know, we leave that. We drive. We end up somewhere, uh, a restaurant, and uh, we have two steaks. The guy told me, he's like, you should get the bison. I said, you should get out of here. So we have two steaks. They're overcooked. Whatever. What are you going to do? We're sitting there. I mean, the restaurant is, is, it takes a long time. Food's not good. What is to stop me from saying that when the waitress put the steak down on my table, she looked at me and she whispered, Heil Hitler, <laughs> and then walked away? What is to stop me from doing that? Nothing. What is to <laughs> stop me from doing that? You know? I don't understand what would potentially, if I could get a few friends and we all had the same story mm. and we could just say, hey, this restaurant, what do they mean? A ra what is it? A racist yeah. activity alert? Yeah, so this is what pops up when you pull up the business. Business accused of racist behavior with a big red exclamation point. And it has a disclaimer before you visit the restaurant's page on Yelp. Dude, no one's going to care if it's a good <laughs> restaurant. If the food is good, nobody's going to give a shit. It's also like the restaurants that are really racist are poor restaurants mm -hmm. where usually minorities hate each other. Can we, can we go to a Korean bodega that hates black people and say <laughs> a racist behavior alert? Can we do that? I've been sitting in Chinese restaurants in New York where a black lady came in and literally the Chinese woman goes, you'll pay now. Like, so well, what is this here? Yeah. Is, are we going to be able to just label everybody, uh, every restaurant is racist, racist behavior alert? I witnessed racist behavior at this restaurant. Fuck Yelp. Fuck you if you need Yelp to make a decision. Fuck you if you use Yelp. Fuck you if you write reviews on Yelp. Fuck all of that shit. It is grotesque. I stayed in a horrible Airbnb. The dude was coked out of his gills. He kept coming downstairs to use the fucking washer dryer. He fuck his kid tried to open the door. The fucking, his roommate was walking around at 2, 3 a.m. I'm like, I don't even think they were gay. I think they were just coke freaks. Middle-aged guy with a roommate. You know what? If you're not fucking, what bonds you together? The love of the night? So he's out there at 2 a.m. just stomping around, and I, and I, me and Dan go, hey, you know, because I'm up giving Dan a lecture about, you know, how superior I am to him in, in comedy, and Dan goes, some guy just walked by through the yard, and I go, what the fuck? So I call the owner. I go, hey, can you tell me what's going on here? He goes, he's just taking out the garbage at fucking 2 a.m. That's my roommate. Let me tell you right now, the guy, then the guy starts asking me for tickets to the show. I'm like, it's sold out. He's like, there's nothing you can do. Bitch. I don't know you. You're doing laundry in the place I'm paying to stay. You're not watching your daughter who's trying to get in the room and your coked out roommate is walking around the backyard at 2 a.m. like he's about to do a home invasion. No, there's nothing I can do. I don't review him negatively. I refuse to review him. I'm not a rat. I'm not a rat. I just don't review. My mistake, my fault. I don't review. I say, I, I either review the Airbnbs very well or I don't review them at all. That's it. That's the, the game that I play. I don't want to destroy that guy's business. Now, should it be destroyed? Unquestionably. I mean, the house was a construction site. Everything was a problem. The parking, everything. There was large cinder blocks everywhere. Uh, he had different people in the yard. 
I, the, 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 you could have easily justified writing the worst review ever, but I did not do it because I'm not a rat. I do not feel comfortable uh, destroying somebody's ability to earn money. Maybe the next person will like that. Maybe his next guest is all coked up and likes strange people and children wandering in the house. And maybe that's part of the fun. Maybe that makes their vacation better, but not me, but I don't review it. I just step back. I go, let this motherfucker do what he wants to do. You know, fine. Doesn't matter to me. Maybe he reviews me. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know, but I'm glad that Yelp is now solving the problem of racism. So you can go identify uh, if the, if the waitress at Applebee's was right. And by the way, Aren't these major corporations going to start to sue Yelp for this? Oh, interesting. Wouldn't wouldn't you sue Yelp? Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. It's saying you I might mean, you might have to link to a news article from a credible media outlet, but I mean Good luck finding one of them. <laughs> a credible media outlet this is what? Like I don't know. I mean they don't What are we doing of- here, folks? Just eat your food and move on, you fat fox. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Green cactus is transphobic. Just eat the taco. I mean, for the love of God, this is really just creeping into every fucking area. It's boredom. This is yeah. boredom. People are bored. And they and they don't know what to do. And people at Yelp are like, how do we capitalize on all of the anti-racism that's floating around. Let's let people rat out restaurants they feel are racist. You should open a restaurant with the best food at the best deals and make it like genuinely the most offensive restaurant ever. Like it should be an oppression themed restaurant. Swear to God, the table should be little gas chambers. (laughs) And the people that serve you should be SS guards and all the performers should be slaves. Slaves. And then to the side of the restaurant, like the people that check you in are Irish and they haven't eaten because of the potato famine and they all look fucking inbred and there should be them. And then there should be a back garden of the restaurant called the Gaza Strip where you you don't even get food. They just throw the, the, the leftover food they found on the floor. They throw it at you. And if you try to get water, they hit you with a stick. And if you price that restaurant up fairly, if you price that fairly, people will go. If the food is good and it is priced fairly, I will straight up look at Ben and go, we're going to Nazi slaves tonight. We're going to Nazi slaves. You know I like the buffalo chicken wrap because it's nice to use the chunky blue cheese. We're going to Nazi slaves. So I don't care if it makes you feel uncomfortable. And we're eating in the back garden of Gaza Strip because of COVID-19. That's what they should fucking do. I mean, if I was a billionaire, I would just open the most offensive restaurant known to man and see what Yelp did with that. How do you like this, Yelp? Christ on the cross would greet you and say, hello, welcome to the restaurant. And then you know what you would do? You would pin a nail in Christ's hand. And we'd have a burger, a really big burger. And if you ate the burger, you would get to assassinate JFK. (laughs) Like we'd have a fake JFK and you could shoot him. And then he'd splatter. And then one of the waitresses pretends to be Jackie. (laughs) And we'd put you on the wall and you said, you finished the JFK burger and I killed Kennedy. And you'd have a big smile on your face. (laughs) The desserts would be 9-11 themed. The most offensive restaurant known to man. Just to fuck with Yelp. See what happens. I mean, just just crazy bad. Just crazy bad. We would hand out crayons and 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 pieces of paper to the kids, but only if they drew Muhammad. Do you understand? This restaurant would last maybe a month. In a mature country. This would be a hilarious restaurant. Yeah. In a mature country, this would be hilar. If we were a mature country. You should be able to go out and eat a meal in a restaurant that makes fun of genocide. 
in a fun way. Now, I guess I understand the argument against this type of restaurant, <laughs> too. I'm not, I don't, I'm not saying that I don't understand that, but I'm just saying it's something to, hey, it's something to consider out there. I like watches. I don't really wear them, but I, I like them, and I should be wearing them more. Ben has a beautiful watch, and I asked him the other day. I said, what watch is this? And what did you tell me? It's Vincero. That's exactly how he said it, too. Like a, like a, a, an inhuman. <laughs> it's Vincero. It's my new Vincero watch. These are nice watches. You want a watch where people go, that guy's a human being. Mm -hmm. These watches, their price point is much lower than a watch that would cost you thousands of dollars. These watches cost you hundred, And they look really, truly kind of like a million bucks. They are a nice watch. It is a nice timepiece. They are several different types of watches that they offer. They have these for the office or for going out to dinner. And then they also have like some waterproof stuff. It depends on your lifestyle. Maybe you're a surfer. Maybe you're more active. Maybe you're not. So you can go to this website. You can check out what they're doing. But these watches are cool. People message Ben all the time, and they go, what watch are you wearing? Yeah, and we finally have the promo code now. I couldn't give it to you. Uh, so it's Vincero. People message me all the time, and they go, what, what is that? And I go, it's psoriasis. <laughs> what about this watch, and how do they get it? Because I'll tell you right now, a watch will make you feel confident. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting down with a woman, you're having a cocktail, or a man, or whatever... It's, as long as it's not a child, please. I try to give pedophiles confidence. They have enough of it. <laughs> Let's get back to the ad. They we'll are watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's our first ad for these people. Right. They are offering you as a listener 20% off your entire order, and they are going to cover all shipping costs if you visit vincerowatches.com. Do you know 10. what this is? This is the Christmas gift for your wife's brother mm -hmm. or your wife's, uh, your, your sister's husband. This is the Christmas gift for the guy you got to give something to. If you, it also, it's a great gift for yourself, but this is the Christmas gift for somebody where you want to spend a few hundreds. You don't want to go into, in, in, right. uh, you don't want to go into debt putting together a gift. And you can do a dress watch, a sports watch, whatever type of person, it's, they have a watch for them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And they have 23,000 five star reviews on their website. You can go read for yourself. That's it. I mean, truly. Everybody loves these watches. They're the perfect price point. It's an insane value for money. They're a great gift. You can gift these watches really to anybody. Uh, people love them. Um, I think that's really the direction that you should go in with a product like this. You go, hey, let me get a Vincero watch. It helps out the Tim Dillon show. I enjoy that show. And um, now what's the story of Vincero? Isn't it inspiring? Let's see. They don't have a backstory here. Well, I do you know do you know that I know the backstory? Oh, what is it? It was started by a, an Italian man who was resisting Mussolini, and he and he resisted Mussolini for a very long time, and then you know social pressures are what they are. He kind of did throw his hat in with Mussolini <laughs> at the end, but <laughs> his <laughs> but he held out for like a week. His, <laughs> his children, his children uh, did not like that. And they were like, that is not most of them. Some of them were like, you know, our father made choices. And, <laughs> you know, a few of the children were like, this country should be glorious. But most of them are not fascists, is my point. The ones that weren't fascists carried the Vincen what is it? Vincero. Vincero. Vincero watches to America to start a new life. And then they became involved in, in criminality, crime family, as many Italians do. Mm -hmm. And they spent most of their life uh, extortion, racketeering, and murdering people that couldn't come up with the monthly VIG. Now, but the watches were really top-notch. And they're beautiful watches. And then when the mafia ended, when the mafia ended, the Vincero family was just like, we're just going to do watches. Mm -hmm. And... They then became very obsessed with Obama's birth certificate. <laughs> and that was an interesting period of time. Um, but now they're just selling watches. Just watches. And they're nice. So how do we get the Ventura watches? I'm going to have so many calls on my <laughs> cell phone. Keep donating to that. Keep giving to the Patreon, folks, because, uh, you know, this is a real... Go to VinceroWatches.com. They're good watches. I mean, we're trying to have fun here, but they're they actually, actually good watches. They're yeah. good watches. 
Go to VinceroWatches.com forward slash Tim. Don't you dare pay full price at checkout. Go to my link and my code, Tim, will be auto-applied at checkout. This is a buy you will not regret. And none of this, and we've checked this out, none of this is going to neo-fascist parties in Italy right now. None of it. Vincero watch. It's a good watch. Manscaped is now doing more than dick trimmers. They're also doing nose hair trimmers. Hair all over your body. You need Manscaped. It's great. It's the best ball hair trimmer on the market. Shaves your piece. Makes it look great. Also, your nose. Any orifice that hair is coming out, yeah. it absolutely takes care of. We, we, Manscaped has been a partner with this show for a very long time. One of our earliest sponsors. We're big fans of Manscaped. I use it. Ben uses it. It's really, really good. I make Ben shave my dick before every show with Manscaped. And then he goes to a lawyer, and the lawyer and the and lawyer's like, you don't have to do that. And then I say to the lawyer, you shut the fuck up. You don't tell him what he has to do. He also has to shave my asshole before every show. And he used to mind it, but he doesn't mind it anymore, right, because of Manscaped. Mm -hmm. doesn't really bother him anymore. And we've got a special offer for the people. Get 20% off and free shipping. 20% off? Uh -huh. You just have to use the code TimD at manscaped.com. They're giving away the store. 20% off code TimD at manscaped.com. God, they're giving away the store. Manscaped.com. For your nose and your balls and everything in between, it's a great way to support the show. It is a really good product. Trump dropped out of the digital debate. He dropped out of the second digital debate. People are saying, can we also stop wishing the president? Yeah, how many articles do we need here that are like, the president might experience the worst of this on day nine? Right. It's like, guys, how many fucking Articles where you're openly wishing for the guy's death do we need to see in the paper? <laughs> I don't think he's doing a good job. I don't think he should necessarily be reelected. I mean, the problem is he's running against a corpse. So I'm kind of taking myself out of this one in any type of emotional investment. I don't think there's a huge upside to either one winning, to be quite honest with you, um, because it is just a fucking disaster. But he's out of the digital debate, and is there one more debate? There's supposed to be a final debate. There's going to be, uh, then they're going to move the third debate to October 29th, just days before the November 3rd election. Yeah, so the final debate is October 29th, right before uh -huh. Halloween, uh -huh. right before the election. Uh -huh. Democrats are killing in early voting. Mm -hmm. They're killing in early voting. Um, they clearly have the enthusiasm on their side. Kamala did a good job in that debate uh, with Mike Pence. Pence held his own too. He's kind of an unlikable white guy. You know, Kamala's got whatever she's got going on. I don't I don't even know her race. I'm not even going to speculate. She's black and, and Indian and she's everything. And she just did a good job. I don't know that that changes anybody's mind. I don't know that these debates change anybody's mind. But we're heading towards Halloween. And then Halloween this year is probably not even going to feel like Halloween. Because there's lots of places that won't be doing the trick-or-treating. And then the real Halloween will start on November 3rd if there is not a clear-cut winner to this election. If this election does not have a clear-cut winner, we're going to have massive protests, demonstrations, riots, and we're going to have a crisis in confidence in the government. We may be heading towards a constitutional crisis if this is not Listen to this, right? So some, my, my, my manager, my old manager, who I had to fire, but I love, but I had to fire because he... Yeah, I love him. I would call him and he would just go, I don't know. I don't know. And I'm like, you got to at least make it up. So this is very interesting. There's this article that came out about Epstein called I Called Everybody in Jeffrey Epstein's Black Book, Bring It Up. But what's funny about the article is they say, you learn a lot about Ghislaine... Uh, Epstein's connections and also stand up comedy. It's odd. Read the tagline of this article. It's kind of interesting. And I'm like, this is all fucking stand up needs. We've had enough in the last few months of people, you know, mm. rightly or wrongly getting a comeuppance. The last thing we need is more fucking bad press. What is the tagline of this? What I learned about rich people, conspiracy, genius, just lane, stand up comedy, and evil from 2000 phone calls. Well, it's like, which one of those doesn't seem like the other? <laughs> so my ex-manager sent me a, a, a section of the article. Epstein took a liking to the comedian, Bobby Slayton, who's a legendary comedian. Yeah, yeah. 
after seeing him perform at the Palm Beach Improv, the guy was a big fan of mine and his girlfriend, Ghislaine, called me for his 50th birthday party. She said he was a big fan and wanted me to come entertain and that there was going to be some big, high-profile people there. So I asked, what does it pay? And she says, well, it doesn't pay anything, but we're going to fly you out and put you up. And I said, what kind of fucking gig is this? Jeffrey was a giant comedy. I love these motherfuckers don't pay. Right. They don't pay. <laughs> fucking scum. We're just never respected. Mm -hmm. We're never respected comedians, you know? You could be entertaining the most successful pedophiles on the planet and you still, no respect. Slate mentioned to Maxwell offhandedly that he might bring his wife, to which he answered, no women. The party fell through, or at least Slayton's invite did, but Epstein kept in contact with the comedian, catching his shows around Palm Beach, Miami, and New York. Epstein invited Slayton to his mansion in Palm Beach for coffee and to, quote, talk about comedy. But when Slayton arrived, Epstein wouldn't let him inside. He showed me the pool in the garage, his cars, but he didn't let me in, Slayton said. He was never invited to the private island, but he once brought it up a conversation with Epstein who responded that he didn't invite many people out there. When Slayton proposed he and his wife come out to the island sometime, Epstein responded, no, no wives. Jeffrey was a giant comedy fan, huge. All he talked to me about was comedy, Slayton said. He was like a little kid talking about it. He loved guys with an edge. He loved Lewis Black, Sam Kinison, Bill Hicks. You know what's kind of sad here? I'm not comparing myself to these people. But let's be honest, he would have enjoyed this show. He would have liked it. He would have liked this show. Yeah, he would have. He would have loved this show. <laughs> I think he would have liked the video where I dressed up like his temple. I bet. And I bet Jis Lane saw that. It was low. Jeffy would have loved this. <laughs> they've, got a real, they've got a real great dynamic, Tim and Ben. It's sad to know that I am now down a fan. It's kind of sad. It is kind of sad. <laughs> He liked good comedy, Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. He liked good comedy. How horrible would it be if he was like, he hated, like he just liked, like not good comedy, which I won't mention what that is. Just let it in your head. Jeffrey was a big fan of, beep. that would be horrible, but this guy liked actually good comedy. So why not? Yeah, but I'm, these, these articles now about Trump, they're a little, they're, they're like, Doctors said that actually around the two-week mark is when Trump's heart will explode in his chest. And you're like, guys, can we stop, you know, reveling in the, in the possibility that this guy might have serious complications from this, you know? Trump is not out of the woods yet. They'll, they'll be running these articles if he wins again. They'll be like, not out of the woods yet. Right. Several months later, it's still a possibility that Trump literally melts. It's never happened before to a corona patient, but it could happen. What about spontaneous combustion? Where Trump? Did you ever hear about that? that used to fascinate me. People that burst into fire. You ever read about I that? I was reading about this the other day, yeah. Because in Arizona, I, I want to see someone burst into fire. So I, oh, and preferably the entire state. I'm kidding. Don't get mad if you're from Arizona. If you're from Arizona, you understand everything I'm saying right now. And if you don't, there's a fucking problem. It's like I talk a lot of shit about Long Island because it's deserved. It's warranted. I've never been like, you know, it's a great compassionate place where people are full of empathy and intelligence. Long Island. I've never said that. I've said good clams, good bagels, good sandwiches. I've said very little about the people other than that they're funny. Right. They are funny. Okay. What is this spontaneous combustion? Is this real? Can this happen and should it happen? Yes or yes? Okay. So supposedly there's about 200 cases of this happening. Crazy. So, like, in Galway, Ireland, a 76-year-old Michael Faraday was found burned to death at his home in December 2010. These I can't trust anything from Ireland. <laughs> These people are completely backwards. They have no idea what's going on. Can we please find... Can we go to a Norwegian country or something where these people have an idea of what the fuck is happening? Ireland believes in banshees and witches. I mean, these people don't. <laughs> Michael Faraday died because he burst into flame. Yeah, sure he did. Great. Thanks. How about you put a floor in your house? <laughs> but you put a floor in the home. I remember I was with an Irish comedian once. She said, why did your grandparents leave Ireland? And I went, well, they weren't dogs. We're on the way to tape Netflix. They weren't dogs. They wanted to live in America because they weren't dogs, okay? They didn't want to piss and shit themselves. <laughs> now, I love Ireland. I love the culture. And I know that what I'm saying now seems like I don't, but it's I do. But let's also be very honest. There's, there's some issues. 
not the most motivated crew. It's not the most motivated group of people living over there in Ireland. You know? This isn't exactly like, uh, let's make it happen. So can we find another example of spontaneous combustion that's not centered in, the, yeah. in, the, in, in, in Aaron's Isle? So here's one from Crown Point, New York. Okay. In 1986, the charred body of 58-year-old retired firefighter George Mott was found in his apartment. All that was left of him was a leg, a shrunken skull, and pieces of his rib cage. What, Ben? How does any of this prove that he spontaneously burst into flames? Like, because there were the remnants weren't there, so the only thing the the people could say was he just spontaneously combusted, and it, like there were just particles interesting. Maybe really he lit himself on fire, though. Some of these they found like, oh, he had a heart attack and a lit cigarette lit his body on fire, and then he just burned into into flames. But it, I want to go like that. I want to go with some spontaneous combustion in in a racist restaurant. And I want people to come back and write about the racist restaurant mm -hmm. and, not, and not me. So, like, methane can build up in the intestines, and that might be how it ignites, some people theorize. But no one's ever, like, witnessed it themselves. No one's ever seen somebody spontaneously combust. No. Methane meaning, like, you don't fart and it just builds up. Yeah, and then it just, something sparks it, like, you know, in a gas tank in a car. And it Dude, you look around. I mean, we, we know me. I'm not the picture of health. But, I mean, you go around <laughs> the country. I mean, this is what it is. I'm trying to swim more. We had avocados and eggs for the breakfast this morning. What do you want me to do here? You know? Um, I've made very bad decisions with my health. I've done drugs. I've smoked. I've drank. I've, I've eaten very bad food, very good food. Um, but you go around the country and you look at some people. Some people, dude, I mean, it's bad. It's truly bad. Mm -hmm. The level of, you know, decay is bad. The, the fat is wild. I mean, there's a lot of people that are just way over four, four or five. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big. The skin you see on some people's is not good. Years of environmental factors, maybe. Maybe it's drugs. Maybe it's booze. But you look around at people, and sometimes you just look at people, and you feel guilty a little bit because you have a, have a good life. You have a decent life. I have a decent life. It's pretty good. And sometimes I'll look at somebody at a rest stop, and have, like, sunken in eyes, and I can tell they they you know they were probably raised in a in a in a coal mine by two parents that just beat and fucked them or something. And like this person is just they have these sunken in eyes, and they're just doing the best they can. Um, and like I'm like, hey man, you have any yogurts? And they're like, you know, no. And I feel so bad for them that I will only. I feel like so bad for them that I will only scream at them for two or three minutes. <laughs> like I will not, usually I'll scream at someone for like a solid six minutes. I will genuinely only scream at these people for two or three minutes because they've had it so bad. You know, and I go, hey, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> I mean, it's the hills have eyes. It's the hills have eyes out there. I mean, this country, large swaths of the country are full of people who, the, the horror movie, you could just make a documentary. You could just pull into like any strip mall and just make a documentary. Just put sad music. Ah, oh, my name is Fern. Like, just, you got a doc. You got a doc. Everyone's like, oh, documentaries are hard. No, they're not in this country. They're not at all. Go to a rest stop. You got a documentary. I could make a brilliant rest stop documentary tomorrow. It's fucking easy. These documentary filmmakers just point a fucking picture. It's, uh, they point their camera to Mongoloid and let them talk for an hour, and then they get a, a fucking Golden Globe and Academy Award. Oh, it's so hard to make it that. No, it's not. It is not. Just point your camera. Go to a bowling alley in Alabama. You have a documentary. Now. Find somebody who's worked there for 30 years right. and just ask them about their life. You just hear the bowls, the pins, you know, and then you have just somebody just eating nacho cheese with the one finger they have left because they lost the other ones in the fucking ball retrieval. Right. <laughs> Everyone's a brilliant documentary. I mean, there's this documentary, Darwin, which is a good documentary. They just found the smallest town yeah. in the America, mm -hmm. in Death Valley, California. 
It's a great documentary. They did a documentary called October Country. Beautiful. Cinematic. Gorgeous. They just went to a family upstate that's all fucked up. That's any family. Hello? You're in a documentary now. <laughs> Tell us about your lives. Are you fucked too? I'm going to go win an award. The guy did it. Donal Mosher, I think he's a photographer. He did it about his own family. But I will say this. I loved October Country. I thought it was brilliant. I think it's called, yes. I thought it was brilliant. And then he never did anything else which upset me. And I actually also like Darwin. I just want to let these people know that artistically, I know what you're doing. It's nowhere near as difficult as what I do every week, which is yell about things that bother me with no preparation into a, a, a camera that I don't even know how to set up. <laughs> you understand? So artistically, I just want you to know that I see you. It's called October Country, right? It is, It's yeah. just a tragic, but it's great, man. Upstate is just tragic. It's great, man. When you get upstate, you just want to take a pill. When you go upstate New York, knowing that downstate is just thriving metropolis, or was, thanks to Blasio, um, de Blasio's daughter's like running around shooting cops now, you know? Wait, really? She was arrested for like uh, looting de Blasio's daughter. These people are, I mean, God. So knowing that the downstate of New York is like a thriving metropolis, it makes upstate even sadder because there's some natural beauty upstate, but there are these old factory towns where all the factories have left. I mean, I was just, I got locked out of my Chase account and I just spent an hour on the phone with people in India and God love them. And, and listen, they're trying to better their lives. No hatred towards them, but all of these fucking jobs, customer service, um, you know, manufacturing, a lot of them went, overseas with NAFTA and all those people in New York state were just left to die. They were just left to, to die there. And when you go to these towns, you just want to take a perk doodle do you want to take a, 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 a Percocet. My aunt used to get really fucked up on pills and we came up with a song. Me and my cousins came up with a song where we would just go perk doodle do perk doodle don't. Will perk a doodle will? I bet you perk a doodle won't. Cause she used to just sit in the chair, uh, all pilled out and all drunk. Now she just goes on the book, but goes on the face book. But I'll I'll tell you right now, I get this documentary canard. I'm unimpressed by it. I've been I've been out on the road for two weeks. I've I've been in nine documentaries. Mm -hmm. Every store is a documentary. Things are not great. Magic Spoon Cereal is a no-sugar, low-carb, keto cereal that fits into any diet plan. It, it replicates all the sugar cereals that you had as a kid, whether it be Fruity Pebbles, my favorite flavor, they have fruity, whether it be Reese's Puffs, they have a peanut butter flavor. It's really, really good. Dan, my opener, loves the peanut butter flavor, uh, you know, because he's Florida trash. But still, I think it's very important, especially if you're on any type of diet, to, to be able to substitute a bowl of cereal for a meal replacement or a snack. It's very good. Magic Spoon is some of the healthy. Yes, it costs a little bit of money because they're using, like, monk fruit extract and really, really like expensive high-end ingredients to sweeten it so they don't have to use sugar. It doesn't kick you out of ketosis, doesn't fuck you up. And they also don't use these crazy sugar alcohols. It's really all natural. So it's really important that if you're making an investment, you're making an investment in your health. I love Magic Spoon cereal. You know, I I feel like there are people that don't understand how much Magic Spoon has changed my life. You know? You know, before Magic Spoon cereal, I was a cannibal. I've never even told you this. I didn't know that. I used to eat people. I would eat the skin of a person. I would cook it and eat it. And it's uncomfortable to discuss this. But and a few of those people I, I killed, hookers and truckers, and I would cook them. And I would eat their flesh, which was keto, technically. Maybe not. I think it was. Some of them had sugar in their blood, probably. When I tried Magic Spoon cereal, I, I stopped doing that. I stopped murdering whores and eating them. And I started eating Magic Spoon cereal. And I went to the police and I confessed. <laughs> and they refused to put me in jail because they said every, they said, hey, hey, white guy. That's what they called me. I said, I just killed a bunch of whores and ate them. They said, hey, white guy. 
We all have moments in our life we're not proud of. They said, what made you stop that? I said, I'm eating a keto cereal, very low in sugar, and I shared it with them. We all ate Magic Spoon cereal. And, uh, and they helped me. Magic Spoon cereal is the official cereal of the police. <laughs> so if you support the cops, support Magic Spoon cereal. A, a, a dollar from every box of Magic Spoon cereal is donated to uh, Derek Chauvin's legal fund. <laughs> Sometimes I do it just so we get the call. <laughs> Because <laughs> sometimes we're bored. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what is the offer here for these people? None of that's true, folks, of course. Uh, magicspoon.com. Tap the cannibal. I did eat people. <laughs> magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon. Use the com code Tim Dillon for free shipping. Magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon. Use the code Tim Dillon for free shipping. It's a great cereal. I really love it. They're coming out with new flavors all the time. It's a great way to stay healthy and stay fit. I'll probably have some of it when I get back to Palm Spring. Yeah, and they'll refund you if you don't like it. So if you don't like it, they'll not? refund you, but you're going to like it, folks. Stop. Hawthorne, your skin, it sucks. Everyone hates you. Your breath is bad, and you smell like shit. Hawthorne is here to help. Why? Why is it so good? You can personalize your products. That's what the rich do. They personalize things. So what Hawthorne allows you to do is you take a little simple quiz, find out what your deal is, what you smell like, your pheromones, where you live, environmental factors, things like that, the type of climate you're in, and they put together a perfect patented fragrance for you and skin creams and everything else. It is a personalized, beautiful way to look beautiful and gorgeous and hot. That's what it is. Hawthorne is great. They've sent us a bunch of products. We've went through the process. We've enjoyed it. It's fun. You create your own little product. You have your own line of things specifically designed for you, where you live, what type of job you're in, the climate you're in, everything. It is really, truly amazing. Um, you know, mass-produced, mass-marketed, clinical stuff, has a lot of drugs and additives in it. Hawthorne is all natural, and it's personalized specifically for you and your needs, Benjamin. So what type of deal are they going to get? So check out Hawthorne at hawthorne.co. That's Hawthorne with an E. And use my promo code TIM to get 10% off your first purchase. That's H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E. Dot co and use the code Tim to get 10% off your purchase. How cool is that? 10% off your first purchase, Hawthorne.co, promo code Tim. I mean, I think America will bounce back slowly but surely. I mean, Arizona, it's like there isn't, a, it's, it's, a, it's not the pandemic in Arizona, but there's just every other problem you could feasibly imagine. <laughs> go, go, what are the stats now in New York? They got 500 cases in New York now. We're like 50,000 cases a day in the country. I swear I had this thing in early March. I don't know that I did, but I'm just going to say that I did to make myself feel better. Yeah, they're trending upward right they're now. They're trending upward right yeah. now because people are going back inside. It's the winter. Mm. People are going back inside, and this shit is going to trend upward. Mm. The kids are going back to school. They're back at colleges. You know. You know how it is. Tell your kid not to go to college. How about that? Tell them that they can't endanger the family and take out a bunch of student loans and listen to a, a professor prattle on about nothing. Tell them to go get a goddamn job. Go work at a rest stop. You know what they have at those rest stops, those for real milkshakes? Have you ever seen them? They're like these weird, they call them F apostrophe R-E-A-L milkshakes. And you got to take, which I don't have any of this, but you got to take them and then mix them in a machine and they become a milkshake. God. I mean, this is what people, yeah, this is what people are drinking. This is what people are drinking in America. A for real milkshake. This is what people are drinking on the road. When they stop into a rest stop, this is what human traffickers are drinking. For real milkshakes and old donuts with flies on them and beer and butts and some ciggies. Get some trail mix, get a few cubes of cheddar cheese, Get back in the car, <laughs> throw some five-hour energy down your throat and get back on the road to nowhere and hope and pray that aliens land. <laughs> hope and pray that aliens land and probe you right up the ass. 
because it'll be more fun or interesting than wherever the hell is at the end of your journey. Mine was Arizona. <laughs> I do respect the Arizona woman, like the leathery turquoise jewelry woman. I always have. You know, that's an expression that people have said a lot, that kind of Arizona woman. And I, I've always kind of respected that kind of demon from hell. You know, yeah. like that, that just kind of Arizona woman. The people in this state, I think, pride themselves, like Long Island, they pride themselves on ignorance. Yes. They pride themselves. You know, when I said, there's no fucking schools here that even, you know, like everybody starts clapping. It's cool to be hot here, which I get. I get it is cool to be hot. But they, they pride themselves on a certain type of ignorance that is, uh, you know, can be a bit scary when times are as trying as they are. A, bit, a little terrifying, the level of ignorance that some of these people, they're just not bright people. The shows are fun. My fans came out. They're, they're bright. I think my fans are a step above. They're a, a cut above the rest of the people in Arizona. Salt Lake is just desolate. No one's there. There's a few Mormons that scurry around here and there. They're clean people, the Mormons. They don't drink. They don't smoke. They run businesses. The Marriott family's Mormon. Didn't know that. Oh, really? My cousin was excommunicated. My second cousin, whatever, not second, cousin-in-law, whatever. My cousin married this guy. He was excommunicated from the Mormon church at like 17. They were just like, fuck you. Get out of here. Wow. Isn't that something? Yeah. They're strict. You cannot get excommunicated from Catholicism, really, truly. Although Bill O'Reilly tried to have his wife excommunicated, which I still find hilarious. He wanted to <laughs> damn the, the, the mother of his children to hell. I forgot about that. One of my favorite things Bill O'Reilly's ever done. I just think that's such a great testament to his character. It's like not enough that, that we're not going to be married. It's like I don't want to make your life hell. I want to ruin eternity as well. I want you to burn in hell forever. How sick is that guy? And everybody watched that guy for like 10 years and thought that was like a guy that you could listen to. And then you found out that he was trying to literally get his wife put in hell. <laughs> and you're like, you're like, oh, this was the guy that was fair and balanced. That was the no spin zone. A guy that was trying to get his wife eternally damned. I mean, he went to the church, tried to have his wife eternally damned. Because that's what excommunication is, by the way. Okay. I mean, can you imagine this this guy? He's a traditionalist. He just wants his wife to burn in hell. His kids go, Dad, why where's mom? Oh, she's in hell. I took care of her. He pictures himself in heaven smoking a cigar. Yeah, my wife's down there in hell. And his wife just, just screams. Ah! <laughs> the unending screams of hell. If you believe that horse shit, you know, that's what he was trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you believe that lake of fire crap, mm. this is what that guy was trying to get accomplished. And that guy was like the guy that everybody was like, Bill's a good traditional man. We should listen to him. He thinks we should go to war in Iraq. <laughs> We're putting up new dates on the uh, website, timdillancomedy.com. Tim J. Dillon, a lot of stuff on Instagram, uh, uh, updating you guys about dates. We are... Wrapping this tour up. Can you bring up the dates, Ben? When do we wrap this baby up? So these ones, these these I wrote down. We got uh, Tampa, the 20th through the 21st. Tampa's now full, full uh, capacity. Yeah. So tickets have opened up. Go and grab them. Side splitters in Tampa. Mm. One of my favorite clubs. We got Palm Beach, the 22nd through the 24th. Palm Beach. Come down there and bring just lane. We got Oklahoma City, October 29th through the 31st. Oklahoma City, we're doing Halloween. Me and Dan Carney will be there for Halloween. Going to be really, really fun. We're doing a lot of crazy shit. If you come out that show for Halloween, we're going to do crazy shit. Costumes, stupid stuff. It's going to be really fun. I think I'll be there that weekend, too. Yeah, Ben may come out for that. Uh, then Chicago, the October 27th through the 28th. 27th through so the right 28th. That, yeah. Chicago, baby. One of my favorite markets and favorite cities. Now we're in the suburbs. We're in the burbs. We're in the Schomburg Improv because... The clubs in Chicago City were not open at the capacity that we want. So we're going to the Burbs. Go to Schomburg. Take a noobsie. Relax. You're, you people drink and drive. Do it. Kansas City, November 10th through the 11th. Kansas City. I've never been there to do comedy. I've been there for other reasons. When I was a little kid, where I was on an acting tour with a play, we stopped through there. Maybe it was the other one, Missouri. I don't know. I don't care. Kansas City. What is this? Kansas or Missouri? 
Kansas City, Missouri, I believe. Okay, we don't know. I'm not sure. The dates are on your website. First yeah. of all, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> the dates are on the fucking website. Just buy the tickets. Uh, uh, then you got Denver. Denver is it. November 12th through the 14th. Then we are done with this leg of the tour. Then we are going dark for December, January, February. Now, by the way, dark meaning... We're doing two podcasts a week. We're doing a right. ton of sketches. We got right. a new YouTube show coming out that we're not talking about. There's all kinds of stuff happening. But that, you know, the, the podcasts are a little tougher to do on the road. We still accomplish them. We still do them. They're still great. But we need to get back to base here. Base camp. We need to so we could create and innovate and do new shit. I can't always be in a fucking Airbnb, uh, you know, in Arizona. Get the fuck out of here. I mean, what are your impressions of this place? Just because just I don't want to fucking get everyone made. Back me up or it's don't. A, it's a skid mark. It, it really is. It is. It's a fucking... It's a horror. <laughs> it's a goddamn horror here. It's the worst. Move. It's like a big P.F. Chang's. I can't think of a worse state. I mean, it's the worst. I can't think of a worse one. There's nothing worse. California ain't great, but at least it's got some high points. I do like Scottsdale. There's some dope mansions in Scottsdale. Mm. Uh, listen, I there's people in Arizona that I dig, and I understand what it is here. But just let's be honest. Enough. Enough with Arizona. And enough with wishing the president death. And enough with ratting out the local fucking microbrewery or fucking... <laughs> Uh, gastro pub, and I mean, I love my friend. My friend Joe and his wife Meg in Georgia took me out to dinner, you know, in Atlanta, and I was unimpressed. And they have a beautiful home and a beautiful family, and they're not, they're not, the mar they're, the mark of success in their life is not impressing me. And thank God, they would have failed horribly. Took me to some gastro pub, folks. Are we high? <laughs> We know the rules, corporate steakhouse or nothing. I'm trying to go to a gastro, but this is actually the best lobster roll. Shut the fuck up. I better recognize this place from other cities. I better know the menu already. Too much risk. And then we walk around some like gentrified area of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I don't want this. I want the big old homes where I feel like I shouldn't be some fucking gentrified area. Everybody's drinking cold brew and planning a friend's giving. Burn in hell. My opener at 24 is like, it's so cool. You love girls here and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I get it. I want to see the dark castles where they control the. I want to see where the power is. <laughs> Not a gastro pub. Stop wasting my time. For the, for the love of God, I should have picked a restaurant. I'm never not picking a restaurant when I go visit no. somebody. Yeah. You have kids. Your job is to raise a beautiful family, and they're doing that. You can't be up on everything, you know? They probably went to Yelp. Probably went to Yelp and said, which restaurant isn't racist? We want to go eat some non-racist poke bowls. Keep buying all the products, please, on the show if you need them. If you don't need them, buy them anyway and give them to people for the holidays. The holidays are coming up. So important, you know? Well, it was good to see my friend. It was good to see old friends. Good to see people you haven't seen in a while, you know? It really is. They're doing great. And, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm, listen, I don't need to be impressed all the time, you know? Be nice to be impressed some of the time. <laughs> Just a little bit. But I'm impressed with their family and their life. Mm -hmm. And that's what they got to do. You know? That's what they got to do. But there is something to be said every now and then for, you know, taking out a guest. You know, the right way. I paid for the meal. Take me out somewhere nice. I said, I'll buy a really expensive dinner, please. Let's go somewhere nice. You know? Say so go to a gastro pub. What are we nuts? Walk around. What? And we went to like a food hall, like a food court, We're like walking around. I'm like, are you are you nuts? I mean, truly, and I don't think they listen to this, so they won't hear it. Okay. But <clears throat> you know, I'm just saying. 
you guys ate some fucked up stuff down there, right? Like waffles and shit. I forget what you had. We had we went to one restaurant that was kind of good, and we just had some southern shit. Yeah, which I'm kind of over the southern food of just you know bacon fried butter balls. Yeah. It's like I just, I just steak and fish, please steak and fish, yeah. and leave me alone. Yeah, I don't need deep fried cornbread. No. You know, bacon pudding. <laughs> fucking you know sausage gravy grits and grease. I don't need that shit. It's not that good. It really isn't that good. It tastes like you should be eating it out of a trough. It truly does. I've eaten it in the in the I've eaten in some of the greatest restaurants in the world, and it's been, it's been an honor for for both me and them. And uh, I just find it tremendously insulting when I'm taken to somewhere that is not up to my standards. I feel like I, I, it makes me sad, and I hope that. Um, you know, I just hope that the next place I'm taking is good. You know? Ben's never taken me anywhere good either. I've never picked a restaurant you've never, for you to go to. You've ever. never picked because you know you're not allowed. I know. And I don't order when we go out either. You're not allowed to order and you're not allowed to pick the restaurant. And every now and then, you you get you to speak at certain intervals. And you know that. like Very much like this show. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, it's not... It's not a free for all. No, no, no. Sometimes we'll sit down and you start going and talking, and I look at you like, "What's this?" And then you realize you're like, "I'm out of control right now." You're like, and then you know the other thing, and I went, "No, no, 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 down." I mean, that's the that's the game here. That's the game. You, you know, I choose the restaurants, I choose the food, I choose the topics of conversation, and I talk about them. You listen, you nod, you look good, you don't get fat, you look respectable. That's that's the way it works, folks. Yeah. You don't think you think that's abusive friendship? You go find a friend. How about that? That works for us. It's actually very healthy. I think it's great. We've been best friends for like three years. This works. Yeah, it does. And it really works. <laughs> you know? He knows every thought out of his head, doesn't need to see the light of day. Right. You know? Most of them are great. Some of them are really good. <laughs> Some of them don't. I mean, the other one, Dan, I just kind of hit and stuff. I just push up against the wall. He knows. I mean, you can't you can't let these people just speak and go on and on and on. You got to cut them off out of love. Out of love. When they start going, you got to go rein it in. And, and Ben has never chosen a restaurant. I mean, he's never allowed. You know, Ben told me once, he goes, you know, I really like a, re a restaurant called Rockin' Egg Cafe. And I said, you know what? I don't go to restaurants where the first word is rockin'. <laughs> so you, you're done now. I like rockin' egg. What did you used to get at Rockin' Egg Cafe? Rockin' and rollin' omelets? What the fuck did you get there? I can't remember, like, Denver omelets and shit. Yeah, good. And you can do that. He's allowed to do that. I'm just uninvolved. I'm to make the decision. Otherwise, we end up in a restaurant with a name like Rockin' Egg Cafe. <laughs> I let Dan choose a restaurant. It was shit. I know what's good. I don't want to know what's good. I just do. If you're the guy that picks the restaurant, always just be that guy. Yeah. Don't let the other people choose. They're wrong. <laughs> let them do other things, like raise their kids. It's very laudable. It's a great activity, but you're not choosing the restaurant because you're going to be wrong. And I'm going to have to you know, make a scene, rip my mask off and cough in someone's face. We were supposed to go to the fry bread house. I think we'll skip that. Yeah, I'm good. I think we'll skip the fry bread house in Arizona. Even though I'm, I'm, it is good. The fry bread is very good, by the way. I just, my my hatred of Arizona is now unfortunately targeting the fry bread house, which has done nothing to me. And it's just probably pretty damn good. But because it is in Phoenix, Arizona, I am now launching into a diatribe against it for no real reason. Thank you to everybody who came out to Arizona, who came out. I love your state. It's an honor to be here. And I really enjoy the fact that you guys came and spent some time with me. One of the greatest gifts as a comedian is to travel around the country and see beautiful and unique places, make connections with people and things. And being here in Arizona has made me deeply grateful <laughs> to have the job that I have and to be able to be on the road here. 
I love all the club owners that give me gifts that were in their children's room an hour before they gave it to me. I love everyone. Thank you so much for allowing me to be in your beautiful state. I do like my job a lot. I don't want to work at a restaurant stop with sunken in eyes. But if I fucking did and somebody came in and a fat cunt came in and wanted yogurt and I would know where that fucking yogurt was, man, would I know where that yogurt is? Because that fat cunt's trying to change his life and he's trying to do a high protein yogurt at 2 a.m. while he's driving through a fucking military base on the way to go perform at the fry bread house for a bunch of lizards. <laughs> Get tickets to the shows. Maybe I'll be nicer to your town. Probably not. Goodbye.